Ready to go to Envy? Yeah, we're headed up the road to Envy. What are we gonna get there? Our drive. We're going to get the new gravel bike, the Envy Mog. Woo, can't wait to get somewhere a little bit warmer. One, one and, for uh, you yeah. and one for me. Yeah, and let's go somewhere warmer and ride it. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. <laughs> yeah, it's too cold here. Envy Fast Facts. Envy was founded in 1942. <laughs> That's not true. I don't know when they were founded, uh, but they'll tell us today. They make a couple road bikes now, and we're gonna pick up their first gravel bike, which is pretty exciting. The Envy Mog. We're here. We're at Envy. Oh, it's, it's doing stuff. Oh, wow. I didn't even do that. Yo, how are you? Welcome in. Hey, thank you, thank you. I'll let Neil know you're here. Cool. Yeah, this is cool. They look like they're passionate about bikes, which I can appreciate. So Envy history. Envy history, yeah. Okay. So Envy was founded in 2007. We obviously started out as a wheel and component manufacturer, but from the earliest days, we've had involvement in frame design manufacturing in that we work with, um, we've always worked with the small custom frame builders in the US and around the world. So we've always had frames on the mind. It's just that it took us a really long time to get to the point where it's like, now it's time for Envy to be more than just a wheel and component manufacturer, but to be a complete bike solution. I guess in 2018, we made you know, the strategic decision to begin allocating resources to R&D for frame development. And out of that exercise is where the custom road concept was born. It's an awesome product. The downside to it is it's because of its bespoke custom nature, we can only make you know, small batch production of that bike. But we also have you know, a lot of customers, both in the US and around the world, who would love access to an Envy frame. That's where the fixed geometry bikes come into play. So last year we launched the Melee, which is a purpose-built road race bike. And what that bike offers is slightly different than what the custom road bike offers. The Melee is a purpose-built road bike. You know, that's just one bike, right? And so knowing that you can't be a legit player in, as a frame in a bicycle company, you know, you can't just have one race bike and one custom road bike. Uh, we know the market wants gravel bikes. The MOG embodies sort of our interpretation of what a modern gravel bike should be. Oh, boom. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, man, that was Envy. Got to see the little bit of the, you know, how it's made. Dude, and how then, it's made. Um, got to see the MOG, check it out, all the details, all the specs. Um, I was blown away when I first saw it, I was like, that thing looks capable off-road. Dude, it's pretty incredible, man. <laughs> yeah, we should probably get it built up. Hey, as you saw, we just got back from Indy. Uh, we checked out the new gravel bike from them, the MOG. The MOG. MOG. What does that stand for? Well, it's an acronym. Did you know? No. Okay. Well, it's uh, Immortal or God, Music of Gravel, Make Outside Great, My Own Grind, Made of Grit. Which, which one is it? Machine you can't, you can't just of keep Grit. Saying things. Mayor of Greatness. It's a, it, it's a mini. I, there's a whole, 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 whole slide here I, I of acronyms. It's the Music of Gravel. Yeah, music of gravel. Yeah. I like that. All right, let's dive into it. So we just got this one built up. Our mechanic, Brandon, helped us with that. Yeah. yeah. What are your we thoughts? built this one up, and this is more, I would say, of a sort of bike packing kind of rig. It has the gravel bars on it. Um, it's a 40-tooth chain ring with the 1050 in the rear. It has the dropper, so you can really get a little gnarly with it. Yeah, there we, um, go. we also got a 58 that we built up, and that was the one that, that you got. Yeah, so I went with a little more of a racy build. Narrow tires, got the uh, aero bars as well. Yep. Um, I did do the same gearing as you. We did run into a little issue there. I wanted to run a 46, unfortunately, had to go down. So yeah. we did that. Yeah, with the 44 and a half mil chain line with the direct mount chain from SRAM, you can only run up to a 44 tooth. Yep. But then with Shimano, since it is a 47 millimeter chain line, you can run up to about a 48. So that would be with GRX. Yeah. So, so yeah, you made yours a little racier, mine a little more, I don't know, to yeah. 
And if you didn't know, mine came out lighter. I didn't tell you that yet. Oh, but <laughs> did it really? It did. How much lighter? It was uh, a pound. I well, you have 40 tires. I have 45 mils and I have yeah. a dropper and you have a rigid post. So that's yeah. probably and I had it. The, the aero bars, which are probably a little bit lighter. Okay. Um, but still. Nice. Not bad. Do you know what the frame weighs in at? I don't really the frame, but I know the complete that we built up, the 58, that was 18 pounds, six ounces. And yours was 19.2. Ah, man. Yeah, so you should lose the dropper if you want to go a little faster. So speaking of the frame weight, uh, I'll give you some stat here on the Envy Slide Deck. It's 900 grams plus or minus 2% with a 56 painted no hardware. Okay. So, I mean, that's pretty light, 900 grams for a gravel bike. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy when I get a, a road bike with like less than 800 gram frame set. So yeah. that's pretty awesome. For sure. And speaking of frame, um, the colors, color options. Yeah, what there are a lot of color options. <laughs> are there? Yeah. You can have pretty much any color just as long as it's sand. Sand. Well, luckily that's a really sick color. So It is a pretty I, cool color, but it only in comes in one color. The Melee that they just launched only comes in black. Yeah. I mean, so. keep it simple. You're launching new bikes and just make the bike speak for itself. Yep. So you mentioned the Melee. Um, yep. How does this bike differ from the Melee? Well, this is a gravel bike. But I saw that the Melee won BWR last year in San Diego. That's true, but this is up to a 700 by 50 tire okay. and the Melee doesn't do anything close to that. I think it's a 38 or something like that or 36. Yeah, I don't remember yeah. exactly. Yeah. But um, yeah, this is a dedicated gravel bike. So um, even like the fork brakes a lot different. This doesn't have any like aero um, qualities to it like the Melee does. I mean, if you look at that one, it's an all around road bike, super aero. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would say this has a little bit. Having the cables internally routed, we'll get to that, but it's a little bit arrow for a gravel yeah, bike. Yeah, for a gravel bike. But I mean, the Melee is a road bike. It's, yeah. a, it's a race bike for, so for the road. Yeah. So if you if you want to check that one out though, the Melee video, we actually have a really good one. Go to the link down in the description, click on that, and uh, you can check out Envy's second first, bike they've yeah. ever made. Yeah, second, second bike, yeah. Because the first bike they ever made was custom. their custom road, which, yeah. which is awesome. All right, Jono, so let's get really technical with this bike. Let's go through the tech specs. We'll start at the front of the bike and work our way to the back. Let's right. start with tire clearance. Let's do it. So tires. Um, 50 max, and we're talking about 700C. Um, ideally, 40 to 44 is what they say. Um, you want to run anything above a 35 is basically it. Yeah, yeah, the minimum you can go is a 35. Yep. At least that's what they recommend. So if you're running in muddy conditions, I'd recommend like a 40. Gives you a lot of clearance. If you're riding in dry conditions, you can run that 50 and be safe. Yep, so yeah, because the 40 is going to allow that mud to clear out. Yep. Got it. All right, so moving on to the front. What's special about the fork? Yeah, so the fork is cool because they have three different rakes depending on the size of the bike. Uh, some brands, they just have one particular fork they use because you have to have different molds for each of those different frames uh, for the carbon layup. Mm -hmm. But Envy decided to invest in three different molds for their frame to have three different rakes. And that allows the bike to handle and perform at the different sizes. Yeah. So the smaller the bike, the different rake, the taller, you know, the bigger the bike, you know, yeah. the, That's the nice. different so rake. Like my 58 so. gonna ride like your 54. Yeah, they're gonna ride the same. And it has the bolts there so you can put on water bottles or storage bags if you want a bike pack. Um, yep. It's got the mounts there. It's got the mounts there for rack, fenders, yeah. and on-frame storage. So, yeah, can do you can bike everything. pack if you want to. Yeah. Yeah, go go do, uh, you know, Unbound XL or Tour Divide. Yeah, I think this would be a great bike for it. Yeah. All right, so moving up from there, tire, fork, boom, headset. You can see it's all integrated here. All integrated, and it's their in-route system. Um, with that, all the cables are going to be routed through the handlebars, through the stem, into the frame. Um, there's not sleeves in the frame, but because it has the cargo box, which we'll get to, um, you can easily get in there and run the cables, so that's not an issue. So this, this one has the gravel bars on it. What bars are compatible with that system? Yeah, so you can run any of the Envy bars, okay. and then you'll want to use their aero stem, which is uh, right there, and allows all the cables to run internally. Yeah. For and two by and one by, it, yeah. it'll do both. Yeah, and the dropper post, which we'll also get to in a second. Yeah. And the cool thing about that stem is it has like a cap on it, so I mean, there's no yeah, you steer tube above it. It's, it's yeah, pretty it cool. super clean. It's very clean. All right, moving back from <clears throat> the stem, yeah, I guess we kind of move further. Well, I guess we talk about the top tube. It also has bolts for a feed bag, which is nice to see. Yeah, the top tube. Yep, exactly. Again, if you're doing a long endurance gravel race, that's crucial to have. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to work our way down to the cargo box. The cargo bay system. Cargo bay system, sorry. Yeah, the cargo bay system is actually really nicely done on the bike. There's this little slide at the bottom of it that you click over, and then there's four bolts in there 
where the door is kind of just hinged up against it and it's really clean and it's really easy to take off. Uh, you can use the bottle cage as sort of like a little handle to yeah. get it off. And it has uh, a lot of space in there. Surprisingly, it comes with two different bags that you can put tools and things like that in there. Or you can just take your jacket or vest off and just yeah, shove it up thing. there. And so yeah, you can put a lot in there. It's nice having the rain jacket. You never know what you're gonna get into in a gravel ride. So yep. Yep, exactly. love that feature. So we talked about the internal routing. Um, it's easy to access through that cargo bay. Yep. Um, there's straps now that hold the cables quiet, which is nice. So there's no rattling. All right, so let's move further down. Okay, further to down. To the bottom bracket area. And what bottom bracket standard do we have? It's a T47. T47 threaded. T47 threaded, which is nice and kind of becoming, uh, I wouldn't say a standard, but it's- A standard, what's a standard? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it is becoming more, more common, common, for sure. Which is nice. I really like that T47. Yep. There's a lot of benefits to that above and beyond the BSA. Um, you know, it's stiffer and lighter and, you know, there's a lot of benefits to yeah. that. Um, but then moving up from the bottom bracket, let's go boom back up to the frame. <laughs> And standard, you have your standard C post. C post. Yeah. 27.2. Yep. Which is great to see. You can run any post you want. You chose to run dropper post. You got the NV dropper. It's the NV dropper with NV. the NV dropper lever yeah, as well. Yeah, which is really nice. It's nice and clean. Um, but you can run other droppers, other 27.2. Yeah. yeah. Anything 27.2 um, will pretty much work on there. I mean, obviously, you need to account for your yeah. frame size and have exactly. not have it bottom out. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's nice to be able to run a dropper on a gravel bike. Yeah. And we see more and more people. Trying it out. I mean, you can uh, descend faster on gravel and on pavement. Yeah, exactly. No super tuck required. No super tuck required. <laughs> All right, so the chainstay, the drive side chainstay, uh, they made it solid on the drive side, which makes it a lot thinner. But uh, that, that solid chainstay is stiff and, um, you know, allows for that really wide tire clearance. So it's kind of a cool feature on the bike, something cool that they thought about there. Yeah. Okay, so the last feature on the frame. UDH, trailer hanger. UDH. So if you bend your hanger, you can, good chance you're gonna find one at a bike shop. Yeah. Um, so it moves on to drivetrain and our capabilities there. And I believe you can run mechanical and electronic. Yeah, one and two by. There is an exception with mechanical two by though. If you wanna run a dropper. Yeah, you can't can. do it. <laughs> yeah, if you wanna run mechanical two by, you can't do a dropper as well. Yeah, but I think most people that would be on two by are probably not gonna put a dropper on their bike. Yeah, because they're looking for all out speed. Yeah. So yeah. I agree with that completely. So drivetrains. Yeah, drivetrains. Shimano, what can we run? We can run the GRX mechanical one by, mechanical two by, but not with a dropper. And then we can run the Shimano electric DI2, GRX one and two by. That's Shimano. Yep. What about SRAM? So SRAM, you can run one by or two by, and that is mechanical. You know, if you have one by 11, you can run that. Two by, you can run uh, electronic shifting. You cannot run mechanical two by because it needs a front derailleur stop and it doesn't have that. So it moves on to SRAM axis. You can run one by or two by. Me personally, I love the one by mullet setup, running the mountain bike derailleur with uh, road front. That's what this one is behind us. Yeah. And also with the axis two by, you can also run a dropper. So yeah. if you wanted to get fully kitted out, that's the way to go. Yeah. And if you want to run the reverb axis dropper, you can do that too. Ooh, that'd be cool. Fully wireless. I like that. And then the last one is Campy. Campy, Ekar. Yeah. Ekar, so you can run that. You can run a Campy one by. You cannot run the two by because you need the front derailleur stop, yeah. uh, which we, this frame doesn't have. Really want to be fast and racy. You can do EPS. Yeah, I don't know why you would, but can't be diehards. I just, would you do that on a gravel bike? I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, I personally would not. But let us know in the comments. Would you run Campy EPS yeah. on this bike? Yeah, that actually is a good. One. Would you run Campy EPS? Leave it down below. I think that just about covers it. But if we missed anything, check out the tech specs. At the link below. Yeah, link in description will take us over to the website, has our landing page there, and you can see it all written out. We didn't miss anything there. What do we have to do with this bike now? We gotta test it. Where are we going? California, because there's too many feet of snow here. Yeah, there's a lot of snow here. So we're gonna go right around Sonoma and Napa Valley and yeah, yeah see if it passes the wine test. Yeah, see if it passes the wine test. And uh, when we get back, we will update you on the performance of the MOG, yep. Master of Grit. Hang tight, we'll be right back. You won't even know we're gone. Music of gravel. Music of gravel. All right. All right. 
So we're back in the studio. Johnny, you made it back from California. I did. Was it nice and warm? It was, there were moments of warmth. <laughs> moments of warmth. I would say there's moments of cold. Mostly oh. it was warm. Mostly yeah. it was warm. Yeah. Nice. And you got to ride the Mog. I did. And I loved it. Even with it loaded up with bags, it rode so well. I was, I was blown away. So what acronym best describes Mog? Oof. They gave us a whole list. They did. I'm going to go with Machine of Greatness. Machine of Greatness. I love that. Yeah. Uh, how about you elaborate on that a little bit? Why is this a Machine of Greatness? Well, it's so versatile. So we had it loaded up with, you know, frame bag, front bag, rear bag, and it rode so nicely. Even on the climbs, like, I didn't, I wasn't like, man, this thing's so heavy because it's just so efficient. But at the same time, when I descended, it wasn't too, like, rough. So it just, like, has that perfect balance of efficiency and comfort. Um, for anything you'd want to do on road, off road. So yeah, on the descents, the head tube angle really shines. So it's 71.5, so a little bit slacker than your, I guess, traditional racy gravel bike. Right. And the fork is raked out. Yeah, so the rake on the my size, which is a 58, it was a 53. So it changes for the sizes, so it, everyone rides the same. But yeah, it really shined on the descents. And having the setup the way I did with the AR bars, um, just having a more stability there, um, and the comfort of those as well. I mean, they're aero, but like, you can feel the flex and just the comfort that you're gonna know that. Like, rally all day downhill. Did you were so rallying? Fun. You were yeah. rallying. That was, that was awesome. I do wish that I did spec it with a dropper post like you. Oh, yours. really? Yeah, yeah Ooh, for the descents. I'm excited for my dropper yeah, post yeah, yeah. on mine then. You'll be fast. That's You'll awesome. Be fast. That's awesome. Um, so, what's this bike for? Is it for bike packing? Is it for gravel racing? Is it for a quip? Is it, is it quiver killer? Woof. I don't know if we should I say that. I don't think so. <laughs> but, well, yeah. It's not a mountain bike. Yeah, it's, it's not a mountain It's not bike. a race road bike. Yep, um, true. But if you want one bike to do all those things, you're going to be compromises for sure with this one, but it's going to be able to handle single track. It's going to be able to handle, you know, the group, fast group rides on the weekend if you throw some faster tires on it. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of a great all-arounder. I would definitely bike back on it. I would definitely do gravel races on it, um, even if it's a short gravel race or a long gravel race, like Unbound XL. Like this is a perfect bike for that. Nice. If you have any questions about the MOG, reach out to the gearhead. Uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions you have. We've had some miles on it, so we know what it rides like. So give us a call. Yeah, give us a call or leave it down in the comments. Make sure you like this video and please subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of really cool videos like this coming out and yeah, we'd love for you to follow along. Thank you. Yeah, we'll see you out there on the gravel.